Hey, what's going on traders? Happy Tuesday. Thank you guys so much for tuning back into the channel. And I wanted to go ahead and get right into today's recap. So let's get started. And as you guys, you know, will notice, I know I mentioned I would be trading on my paper simulation account all week. But as you guys can tell, right, this is actually my real account. And the main reason why I decided to trade on my real account today was my brother actually was not going to be able to trade. And he's the one trading on the main account. So I decided, you know, to actually go ahead and use the main account because I feel like it really test my emotional ability more than a paper trading account does but that's just my own opinion right and so i went ahead and you know use my real account today so as you guys can tell right there are lots of orders because i now have lots of swing trades but in terms of my actual day trading right i was up 27 dollars and 66 cents on skqq and then i did lose two dollars and 69 cents on tqqq right so up about like 24 25 dollars Definitely not a, such a big eventful day at all, right? And as you guys can see, I actually stopped trading pretty early on at 8 o'clock, right? And I started trading all the way at market open, right? At right at 6.30. So um, I want to go ahead and let you guys know exactly what was going on through my head and, you know, let you walk you guys through, you know, what I was seeing. So as the market was beginning to open, right, what I noticed was that we were trading, you know, between the top and middle VWAP during the pre-market session, but we eventually did break below it, right, and we're finding some form of support around the bottom VWAP, but what ended up happening, well, as we ended up bouncing off it, we ended up, you know, testing it again and breaking below that level, and so right at market open, right, this thing started to fall, right, as you guys can see, let me zoom on in so you get a better view, Right, right at 6.30, you'll notice the increase in volume bars, right? The Nasdaq started to sell off, and I started to get into SQQQ, but we did have this bounce. And so this bounce actually caused me to lose profit here, right? Because I was averaging into it as it was falling, and it ended up bouncing pretty aggressively. So I took a small loss there, but it ended up selling off, right? And so I just was really planning on going with direction on the day. So as this continued to sell off, I would get back in, and I would try to, you know, load off somewhere where I thought it would potentially bounce but you know as you guys know I make lots of mistakes so I wasn't timing it very well and so you know these bounces right that you see were actually you know causing me to give back profit but I was actually up a decent amount after you know this it had to be around 30 40 dollars in my opinion and so as this thing ended up shooting up and falling what ended up happening well rather than continuously sell off like it was you know doing all during the morning session what ended up happening it actually broke up broke above the ema right and formed a higher low and so this thing actually ended up pulling on back right so this thing actually sold off found a support changed direction so as this thing would sell off i would get aggressively into sqqq but you know these really quick changes in direction really caused me to give back all my profit and you know it's something i i think i struggle with the most in terms of trading and it's knowing when to call it quits going with direction and you know when there can possibly be a change in direction i need to learn how to adapt so that i'm either not even invested when this thing is starting to change direction before it continues to fall right maybe i shouldn't even be invested at all or i should try to you know to be getting into tqqq i'm not sure yet but i think you know as of now of where i'm at in terms of my trading um, I think that it'd probably be better in my opinion, right, to just hold off until it actually starts to sell off again. And so as we saw, there was lots of choppiness, right, as it recovered back up to the middle of VWAP, right, it ended up having a bit of a double top here, pulled on back, and then started to sell off even more. So at this point, with this change in direction after this sell off here, I lost, you know, everything I was up and I was down about $100 on the day, right, so pretty similar to what's happened to me in the past and as this thing started to actually sell off again right i was able to make back my money so by the time it was 748 i was down you know over a hundred dollars but by the time it hit 813 right this thing had sold off all the way from middle vwap all the way down here and i was able to take advantage of it so i made back everything i was down plus a little bit of profit right so it just goes to show how i you know if direction and momentum isn't you know necessarily in my favor at the moment i don't need to force anything right there was nice sell selling pressure right at market open but once direction changes i just need to be able to walk away right hold hold myself accountable to just walk away hold off a bit until direction becomes clear when would it become clear well this thing was super choppy 
right? It peaked out, started to sell off, pulled back up, and then started to sell off again, right? So um, I could have tried getting in during this sell off or even this sell off here. Well, I took advantage of both of them, right? But you know what I need to do better of is knowing when direction is in my favor to step on the gas and when direction stops, you know, being in my favor and momentum starts to shift, I need to learn to stop trading or reduce position sizing, right? Because once direction starts to become in my favor again, I really do a good job of capitalizing on it, right? But you know, at what cost? I was already down triple digits, so I was just making the triple digit back, right? Just imagine in the future if I'm able to capitalize on this, right? Then I'm able to walk away when things start to turn ugly. And then once direction's in my favor, I can really step on the gas even more again. And rather than just make back 100, you know, I'm actually just making $100 profit on the day. I'm not just digging myself out of a hole, right? But that's pretty much everything, you know, I wanted to talk about in terms of today's video, what led to me being able to walk away with some profit. As you guys can tell, there was still more money to be made. The selling pressure as it broke below the bottom VWAP caused this thing to really, you know, tank and... It eventually tried to recover before it sold off again, right? And we had that similar choppiness pattern where it'd sell off, pick back up, sell off, right? Before it set itself up again, it would just, you know, continue to sell off. And so, you know, on the bigger time frame, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, I, you know, I said there was a good chance we can start to pull on back, right? Given how overextended the NASDAQ was. But, you know, we just really need to follow up with it and see exactly what's going to happen in terms of my actual swing trades right what you guys will notice is i am very heavily invested in the tech industry right now right so from when i bought lucid right i got in at 1008 a share it's now at 976 right so i am down 32 dollars on it i'm only invested in all of my swing trades with 1000 dollars, but i plan on adding to them once the nasdaq starts to actually indicate signs of an uptrend long term right what do i mean by that well the Nasdaq is starting to sell off, right? But on the bigger time frames, what I want to see going on is for this thing to break above the EMA and use it as a support rather than the resistance, right? As it did before, when it breaks above the EMA, it tends to use it as a support to make these higher highs and higher lows. Right now, we were doing the exact opposite, right? We broke below and we're using it as a resistance to form these lower lows and lower highs. But now, right, we are testing the SMA line. So we are going to see if this thing will start to continue to recover or or continue to sell off, right? So we're just really going to have to wait and see. But right with the NASDAQ being down, it's been dropping a lot of my tech stocks with it. Snapchat, for example, I got in at 996, right? It's now at 982. So I'm down $15 on that. So my biggest, I'm down on pretty much every swing trade right now. And I'm perfectly okay with that, right? These are more long-term plays. My biggest loss right now is Roblox, which I bought into with $1,000 you know, just a few days ago, and I got in at 31.89, it's at 29.83. So I'm already down 7%, right, which is a decent amount of money within a short period of time, you know, but I do see long term potential in these companies. Um, in terms of what my biggest winner is right now, it's still Tesla, right? Tesla, I got in at 167.90, it's currently trading at 180. So I am up $75. But what you guys will notice is on the open, right? I am down currently $150. So you know, that is unfortunate, but, you know, it's not like I didn't expect that to happen, right? I knew the NASDAQ can continue to sell off. That's why I got in with light position sizes. But, yeah, um, I am, you know, excited to see if the NASDAQ does eventually start to recover. We do have some reports going on later on this week, right, that can, may influence the price of the NASDAQ. So we are going to follow up with those and, you know, I'll let you know what ends up being reported. But that's pretty much everything for today's video. I want to thank you guys so much again for your time. and. If you guys have any questions at all, go ahead and drop a comment and I will be more than happy to answer it myself. But that's pretty much everything. Um, I will be posting a video tomorrow, so I will see you guys then. Take care.